Thank you, appreciate the introduction. So a little bit on ComNet, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. Uh, she do a great job of repping us and, and reselling us, so we appreciate that. Uh, just a little bit on our history. You know, we are the old group that started IFS back in the day. So a little bit of that old technology, old, uh, old school mentality we still maintain today. So U.S.-based company, all support based out of the United States. We're not uh, sending anything offshore. Uh, you don't have to call overseas to get tech support like some of the major players in the industry. And the two gentlemen in the picture have been with, you know, ComNet IFS for 20 plus years, and they're still there. They're still leading the charge. They're still available on a daily basis through support base. So a little bit how we're changing and adapting is with the current business environment, we've had to recalibrate how we do things, how we reach customers. And I'm sure you guys are feeling the same way. You know, a lot of times now, instead of just visiting customers, we get, um, I'll get the feedback saying, you know, Rocky, if you come in, I have to quarantine for two weeks. And, uh, you know, so it definitely complicates the current business environment, but we're here to help. I'm here to help. I'm our national trainer and A&E program manager. So if you come up with opportunities and you need a sales presentation, maybe you need a technical webinar for a new dealer, someone that's not uh, proficient with uh, IP or Ethernet technologies, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help. I could host um, a technical webinar. I could host uh, a sales training, anything you like that would uh, support your customer base. So. Uh, whatever you need to help drive sales, we're here to help in any way. And then also from a general company overview, uh, you can always call in and email us for pre and post sales design questions and support. And then also our customer care can assist with pricing and availability on any products. And then overall on our products, most of our gear have a lifetime warranty, lifetime support, and software upgrades. That's a key selling point for us. So everything I'm going to list and highlight today, it's going to have a lifetime warranty. It's going to be hardened to meet outdoor extreme environments. And really, we're putting a product out there that we feel it's going to, it's the top of the food chain. It's the best at edge networking uh, compared to anyone else in the business. And I'll kind of explain why we think that is. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, message us in the chat window. Um, I will be taking a, a peek at that every now and then. Also, our regional or our strategic account manager, Kevin McKeever, is watching that window. So we should uh, get a quick response back to you. If not, we'll touch base at the end of the presentation. We should have a 10 to 15 minute window to go over any questions. A little bit on our current product offering. Like I mentioned, uh, we are the old IFS group from back in the day uh, that, you know, IFS started by George Lickblau uh, out in Connecticut area probably 25, 28 years ago now. Um, old fiber options or fiber transmission company, anything from fiber video transmitters, media converters, anything along those lines they did. Uh, we still do those today. So when ComNet started, we basically took, um, took the same portfolio and updated it. So we do have some uh, cross compatibility options for you. So if you run into an application, you run into a customer that is a dinosaur, they're old school uh, legacy fiber options, uh, fiber optic uh, carrier dealer, uh, we will have a cross for them. So keep that in mind, we still have a full, full product portfolio of the legacy fiber options product. And then now everything's kind of moving into hardened ethernet or IP technology. So no longer are we seeing analog cameras or at least new analog cameras out there. Everything's moving to IP. So our flagship products now are gonna be in the hardened ethernet range. So anything from four ports to 28 ports, uh, POE, non-POE, up to 60 watt POE sources available uh, per port. Uh, we do have some options available for you. We also have some commercial line products. These are nice. These are kind of just indoor options. I'm not really going to cover them. These are our low cost options for 
you know, if you have an indoor, maybe on the desk uh, switching need, we can fulfill those options as well. And then of course our retrofit, this is our bread and butter. We do this better than anyone else in the industry. Uh, anything that's legacy, coax, UTP cable runs um, over extended distances, we can support your application. So a common one is you have an analog camera out in a remote location where you cannot rewire or recable. You can use our legacy devices to power that camera, a new IP camera over the existing infrastructure. So it's really beneficial. Overall cost savings is tremendous when you factor in the cost to have to pull cable over, you know, a thousand feet. And then on the wireless side, we do have wireless point to point bridges. This is my specialty. I'm out of the wireless development office in California and recently took over as a trainer role. So I definitely will include this product I'm very proud of. It's something uh, that they brought me along when this started. So I'm on the initial product development team on this product, made in the USA using the best chipset in the industry, Qualcomm wireless chipset, really great product, hardened, and I uh, stand fully behind it. And then lastly, Something I'm not gonna cover in too much detail. Uh, we do have an access control line for 32 door or less applications. One thing to note on this, this is from our sister company, Vanderbilt. So one thing to note for your dealers is to get certified or to have, to be able to resell a lot of these card access systems, a new dealer would have to go through a certification process that might cost upward of $10,000. So I know um, some other company, large uh, major player in the industry, they require two engineers to go to a week long training. Uh, and then they also require the purchase of a demo kit. So right out the door before your, your new dealer can resell any card access systems, they have to invest in over $10,000. With this system, they can purchase from you direct. They don't need certifications. They don't need to jump through any additional hoops. So if you have a project, you have maybe a new dealer, they want to get their hands wet or the feet wet within uh, the card access systems. This is perfect for us. Easy to deploy, easy to install. So today I'm going to cover the benefits of hardened Ethernet devices compared to just standard commercial grade products. So a lot of our applications, we're seeing devices placed outdoors, whether it's in a junction box, a traffic control cabinet, um, an enclosure up a telephone pole, or maybe it's just a guard shack in the middle of nowhere. Uh, those are considered roughly outdoors. Um, and some of the factors that play into this are gonna be temperature, the elements, the cabling infrastructure, power availability, and some of electrical issues that could pop up on certain applications. So the first thing is temperature. If you have something in the extremes, maybe it's up north, um, Alaska, it's up in Minnesota, up in you know, some place that's gonna hit negative 40 below. Um, those are really harsh environments, not designed for commercial devices. Same goes for middle of Death Valley, uh, Arizona, someplace that's gonna hit literally 130 degrees ambient temperature in the summertime. Those wreak havoc on common networking devices. So typical, typical um, considerations or typical layouts that we see. So traffic control cabinets, um, anything city surveillance, housing, maybe, the housing market, it's an enclosure up in an attic, you know, a crawl space, it's a parking structure, you're going to see a, a call box or junction box at the top of the building on a corner there, or it could be someplace a little more industrial, maybe airport or shipping docks or anything along stadiums or any place, basically, you have an enclosure exposed to the elements, they're going to be susceptible to those power and temperature issues. So how we do things on our hardened products, how they differ from commercial grade products is 
First of all, our ethernet devices are typically made to go in another enclosure. So whether it's a TS1 NEMA enclosure, traffic cabinet, or something along those lines, we do need a box to protect it from the elements. And we do have some enclosures that are just released for smaller applications. I'll send that out, info out to you on a later date. But we do need uh, that physical enclosure to protect from the elements. But from a technical standpoint, all our products, all our hardened products are rated from negative 40 C to 100 and uh, negative 40 Fahrenheit to 167 uh, Fahrenheit operating temperature. So keep that in mind, that's our operating temperature, not storage temperature. So at full network load, we will survive in those temps. And then another huge benefit for us is, you know, we're designing our products based to have no fan, if possible for protecting against, protecting against uh, voltage protections. Uh, we're adding conformal coating when appropriate, and that is an option for uh, some of the more humid uh, regional areas. And then just overall, we're certified for shock and vibration. So the product we're putting out is designed to meet these extreme uh, temperature variations, extreme climate variations. Now how that varies from our standard, you know, maybe our industrial competitors. Here's an example of what they're doing. You'll see uh, an enclosure here that has a heater blower. Uh, this is designed for their, our competitors hardened products or industrial products. So there may be only rated to 60 C, uh, 60 C or even 50 C and they need this AC cooler or they'll need a heater, something to keep their product alive. So maybe it's not just a switch in a cabinet, maybe it's media, media converters, power injectors, or another device. It could be anything along, long, anything networking based, you have this enclosure, they're trying to keep alive with heater, blower, um, anything else, air conditioner. From the ComNet side, we typically don't need any of that. So you don't need to add this advanced hardware. You don't need the giant enclosure. For us, you put our media converter switch in a small polycarbonate enclosure, wire it up directly, obviously provide the power source, and that's all you need. There's no fans to go down. Um, if you lose a fan, you're not going to uh, lose anything, lose any functionality. And uh, so that's really where we play. That's our differentiator from our competitors. So that's what we do best. Um, another product or another thing to consider is the enclosure. So there's an initial cost for us that may be slightly different from some of our competitors, but when you factor in not having to add a heater blower or an air conditioner to the enclosure, or get some giant monstrosity out at an intersection, then you're really gonna save money right on your initial investment. So keep that in mind. Um, there's a lot of options for enclosures, for housing, for our products. A lot of our products are slim form factor, so you can uh, easy to deploy, easy to design a layout for your customer. There's another example, common application here, little cellular gateway uh, power supply. So slim form factor, a lot of our products, media converters are gonna have SFP transceivers. So we can have a multiple port SFP option in there for rings, for daisy chains, all in a nice slim, small enclosure form factor. So a little bit on the differentiator for us is you know, there, there is a cost difference from a commercial grade product or a lesser known uh, industrial product. But the problem there is a commercial grade product is designed for indoor applications. And when you're designing indoor applications, maybe it's just a building or a campus, the biggest factor your customers are gonna want is gonna be, biggest considerations are gonna be price and size you know, how much rack space do they have and what's the overall cost? And then of course, speed. For us, the biggest factor we see is reliability. So customers, obviously they're gonna haggle price, they're gonna haggle uh, other concerns, but the most important thing is reliability. Because as you 
deploy a lesser known uh, product out there or an inferior product out in the field, it may work for a year or two, but a year and a half down the road, you're going to have to get a bucket truck. You're going to have to rent a lift to go out there and swap out the device. So that's going to start eating into their profits. So if you have a dealer, you have uh, someone reselling your products, you definitely want to lead with the best in the industry. So we feel like that's our product. So a few of the products I'm going to highlight here today, uh, we're just going to cover some basics on media converters and then Ethernet extenders, how they differ from media converters, our wireless bridges, and manage and self-manage switches. So the first three products, media converters, extenders, and bridges, are all basically doing the same concept. They're taking a remote location and bridging it back to a central location. So media converter is typically going to do that over fiber optic, a traditional media converter. Ethernet extenders, that's our copper line product. That's going to handle anything using a, a retrofit coax link or retrofit uh, UTP cable. Link. Then, of course, our wireless bridge. If you have applications that aren't able to pull fiber, aren't able to pull any type of cabling, consider the wireless bridge as long as you have power at the remote location. So first product up is a standard media converter example. Uh, this is a layout of something that's very popular right now. We're seeing a lot of high power cameras come about. So whether it's Hanwha, uh, Pelco, um, anyone else, we're seeing a lot of 60, 70, 80 watt cameras. Uh, some of them have IR illuminators, some of them have heaters. Keep in mind, we don't need the heaters for our devices, but they might. Um, in this application, we have an NVR to switch at the head end, and we have uh, a standard media converter. Any one of our units that's hardened will fit this application. And in this drawing, it, it's going to a high PoE injector that we also have available. So using this application, this is out in an enclosure, out of at this light pole or whatever this device is or whatever this may be. We have power out there. We power up our media converter, the injector. The injector powers the camera. You're off and running. So this could be multi-mode. This could be single mode. The nice thing with fiber is we can go over extreme distances up to 100 kilometers. And then performance with fiber, you're getting reliable uh, 100 meg or gigabit performance. On a media converter, we're limited to gigabit at the moment. Uh, typically, you don't need 10 gig with a media converter, but we do have that available in some switches. So just a few other options on our media converter side. Uh, you can use them in pairs if you don't have a fiber optic switch available. So in this example here, we have a general 24 port switch and we have two media converters linking the switch to the camera over fiber. This application, we wanted to add in 12, 14 more cameras. We can have this distribution switch using a pair of media converters for each camera run. The nice thing about this is we can change up fibers between each link. Each link can have different distances, different fiber connector types. It really simplifies your install. And then of course, if you don't wanna use 14 individual uh, media converters at the head end or just lay them around, we do have a rack mount chassis that's available. Just note in this design that you have a five and a half U or five or six U high chassis, and then each link is going back to a core switch. The nice thing about this design, while it's not efficient in rack space, the nice thing about this design is if you lose one camera, and you need to troubleshoot it. Let's say you lost the third camera from the left and you need to get it up and running ASAP uh, without, with minimal downtime. What you would do is replace the camera and replace both media converters connected to it. While you're doing that, the rest of the network is unaffected. So you replace the card cage, third slot from the left, you replace the media converter in the field and the camera you're back up and running. Now you can troubleshoot the three devices on a test bench separate from the uh, camera system. 
That's really nice for larger deployments. We see casinos do this, you know, casinos with hundreds and hundreds of cameras. They really want to simplify their troubleshooting, so they'll do this. A little more better design, a little more modern design is we have fiber optic switch ports available. We have them available in a combo of a 12 plus 12, 12 PoE ports, 12 SFP ports. And then we have a full 24 port fiber optic switch. So if you want to bring 24 cameras back to one centralized switch, one uh, two U high switch, this is your option. It's going to be uh, very cost competitive compared to the other options. And then it's just a nicer streamlined look and it's a simpler to deploy. And then you manage all these devices through one IP interface. That's really beneficial. So here's an example or just a listing of some of our com media converters. So the top two devices are what you would see in the field. Unit on the top left is a gigabit unit. Unit on the right is 100 meg. Unit on the right has the built-in ST optic. Unit on the left requires an SFP transceiver. So some of the benefits behind that is if you use an SFP transceiver, then it's easier to match up with the other end equipment. And it's typically compatible with third-party manufacturers. Comnet tries to be compliant with all other manufacturers. We understand that we're coming in at the edge and we need to be agreeable or compatible with everyone we're at the core. So all of our SRPs are MSA compliant. And in fact, they should work in all other man switch manufacturers as well. There is a giant um, leader in the industry that likes to prevent third-party SFPs from their switches. Uh, so there is a consideration for that. But anyone else, any switch manufacturer that is MSA compliant, our, our, our SFPs should work in their hardware. So keep that in mind. We have SFP options for you for single mode, multi-mode, you know, two kilometer distance up to 120 kilometers. So Whatever fiber you have out there, we have an SFP for that application. And then the two units on the bottom to the left and the right, those are our car cage comfit uh, devices. So those are the ones that would slide into that C1 chassis. And then each chassis supports up to 14 of those modules. So that's nice uh, if you have that you know, casino deployment or large distribution center where you wanna manage each one individually. It's nice to deploy that um, and simplify your install. So now the first media converter was dealing with fiber between the two locations. Well, what happens if you have an old analog deployment and that's using a coax cable between? Maybe it's coax with PTZ up the coax uh, and you have one of our old um, transmitters out there. Well, now we use our copper line option. So using the one of these products here, you can extend that coax run up to 2,000 feet with pass-through PoE from your uh, PoE source. So at the edge device, you no longer need to power it. Power's not available. We can send up to 30 or 25 watts of PoE uh, to that camera depending on your distances. And I'll cover that in towards the end of this uh, section here. But if you have anything RG6, RG59, existing application, you just can't run fiber optic cable, uh, we have that option for you. Also covers UTP unshielded twisted pair. So we see this lot of older applications, maybe it's a hospital where you can't get into the walls or it's a historic building where they don't want you to uh, provide any additional cable runs, you have to use existing infrastructure. With this, in theory, we, in theory, we could use a punch down block of old telephone cable and pass our signal. So we could pass just data with a simple uh, one pair of cable, or we can pass data in PoE with, with a uh, four pair of UTP cable. So the most common application for this uh, setup is going to be what you see here. We have a PoE switch with PoE available to our devices. So we're going to have one unit set to local, the other unit set to remote, 
And then we're gonna have a PD device, a power device, which is a camera. So any device that's requesting PoE, so a camera, maybe it's a card access system or a talk -a phone uh, that's gonna request uh, PoE and that's gonna signal the switch to send PoE across the devices. So without any additional power, we can extend this up to 2000 feet depending on your PoE requirement. So this camera, let's say it's a 13 watt camera or 14 watt camera, we can extend it up to about a thousand feet with a 30 watt PoE source. So really simplifies your installation, reuse existing cabling, and you're gonna save a lot of money on that install. For some other applications, we do have local power injection available. So uh, there's, there's many scenarios. I didn't want to cover them all. You know, we only have about an hour here. So on this application, we have a 40 volts uh, DC power source on our switch. It's going to inject power to our remote device and the camera. We also have power available across all modules. So if you just want to send data through that link up to 2,000 feet, we can do that. So the more power you request, through PoE pass-through, the less distance you're gonna get. So looking at this chart, um, let's look at the coax here. Sending data only at 10 meg, we can reach 5,000 feet. But sending with the uh, PoE uh, for let's say a 15 watt camera, we're only gonna reach about 750 feet at 10 megs. So keep that in mind, there is some distance limitations. As soon as you exceed a certain range, you start having a power drop on that line. So feel free to contact support. If you have any questions on that, we'd be happy to work with you on that. We have advanced calculators and algorithms to determine if it's gonna work or not. Also keep in mind, our numbers are very conservative. We don't wanna put you guys in a bind. So anything within this range will work. Uh, just keep that in mind. And then next, we're gonna cover, you know, if you don't have existing wiring, you need to get a few devices back to your head end, uh, what do you use? So we have wireless bridges for those applications. This is not a Wi-Fi hotspot. It's the same technology, it will work in that application, but all our antennas are directional. So we want a point-to-point -point, uh, or point-to-multi-point -point setup. Our radios are fully compliant. Like I said, at ComNet, we want to play nice with everyone. We realize we're coming in at the edge. We're the guest on the network. We want to play well with um, whatever's out there. So we're fully 802.11 ATAF spec. Um, and then we'll also, on our high throughput, ra high throughput radios, we'll support the AC spec as well. So I have these in my office. I'll connect through uh, my iPhone, Android, laptops, whatever. It's standard Wi-Fi technology. So anything you buy from us should be compatible with the industry norm. Now on the wireless side, we do support speeds up to 500 megs. And typical radio is gonna be about 150 megabit throughput, depending on your RF environment. Everything we do on the wireless side is designed for surveillance or camera traffic. So, or camera applications. So a lot of manufacturers, the low cost guys, the, uh, well, I won't say names here, but they're geared more towards networking traffic. So maybe it's servers, maybe it's PC data, maybe it's streaming YouTube videos. For us, we're streaming camera traffic and we're not gonna manipulate the data at all. That's critical for larger camera infrastructure because I've seen some other competitors get out there and the cameras are starting to see jitter, they're starting to see latency, all because of how the, the radios handle the camera traffic. We're not filtering anything at all. Essentially, you can bring up a kit, plug it into your network, plug in your camera, off and running. There's nothing to change the camera traffic. That's key when you see camera issues or you, you're troubleshooting camera issues, you can count on a radio not, manip not manipulating anything at all. So that's critical. I know when I'm out there troubleshooting a job site, I'm looking at the switching equipment first and foremost. So here's a typical setup, point to point. 
We have a camera out at a pole. Uh, what's not shown here is we have a power injector and probably a switch in there if you have multiple cameras. But mode applications, we'll go up to four miles. Uh, we rate it for two miles on the standard NW1, four miles on the nine. There's no hard set limitation. At four miles, um, even at two miles, you're taking account the curvature of the earth. So we're really limiting our customers, uh, limited by our customers' technical ability. So if you want to set up a radio at the four mile range, they're going to need a 200 foot tower, maybe a water tower. It's really limiting on what they can do. So we just rate it at two miles. But there's nothing in the software license based or anything that limits speed or performance. And then the radios can support point to multi point deployments. There's no limit on the number of clients. We just uh, need to know the angle. So the standard antenna is going to have a 17 degree beam width and uh, up to, let's say, 100 meg performance. So the limiting factor here is not the number of clients or the cameras, it's the total throughput and this angle. So let us know if you have a design, get us a Google Earth layout or some type of layout. And then we can get you a build of materials based on that. So we need to know the throughput and the angle. The angle is going to help us determine how many uh, access points we're going to need. So in this diagram, this central unit is the access point, and the three camera locations are clients or transmitters. If you're an old technology guy, you might consider the access point a receiver, and then the three units at the camera side are transmitters. And then we have a backhaul radio. This is more towards building to building. So maybe you have eight cameras or you just want to get, you know, internet access to a guard shack. So this radio will do up to 500 megs. Real world performance, I always spec 50 to 80% of the actual number we rate. And the reason is we just, it's hard to tell what the RF environment's going to be like. So feel free to call us. We'll take a look at the RF environment and kind of estimate what's going on. And we'll give you a good estimate on uh, what hardware you're going to need. So here's our wireless portfolio. We have just a low cost option, you know, NWK11. And then we have our standard radios, NW1s. These are better than our competitors because we'll do pass-through PoE without any additional licenses. And then also full speeds right off the bat. You know, some of our competitors, you can buy a 30 megabit radio and then pay a licensing upgrade to get it to 50, another upgrade to 100. We don't do that. Full speed out of the box, lifetime warranty on the hardware. So three media converters I covered, uh, the fiber optic media converters, the retrofit extenders, basically uh, getting point, point A to point B over existing uh, infrastructure, and then the wireless. Now, if everything goes right, you can use those in conjunction with our switches, or you can use essentially a switch as an uplink. They do have fiber optic ports. So you can put a four port or an eight port switch out by your camera, connect it over SFP transceiver and link it back to the head end. Nice thing about this deployment is, uh, you know, simplifying your install, you do away with the media converter. The switch will act as a media converter and a managed switch in one. The benefit of having a managed switch out by your cameras, even if it's only two or three cameras, is uh, the network admin can remote into that switch and can manage the camera remotely. So if you need to power cycle the camera, we can get into that eight port switch. We can turn off power. It'll shut down the camera. Re-enable PoE, cameras back online, powered cycle, everything's back up and running. So that's nice if, uh, you know, you roll out some camera updates and one or two didn't come back alive. Now you can just power cycle them through the switch, bring them back online, you're up and running. So there's definitely a benefit to having a managed switch out there at the edge. So with all these devices here, same hardened principles, rated negative 40C to 75C. Uh, hardware is designed to be an enclosure, uh, full power, full ComNet spec. The, the unit on the top right there, our eight port uh, switch is our flagship product. No fans, full featured enterprise level switch. I'll cover it in a few more slides here. 
and just a great product overall. It's really something we're proud of, we're leading with, uh, definitely made in the USA and uh, probably the next generation of ComNet products. It's really leading us to some really cool engineering projects and software projects for our customer base. So great stuff coming out in the next few years. So in the managed and self-managed switch portfolio, I'll introduce two product lines here. We have a CNGE 2 plus 2 product. This is a self-managed switch and, a, and has a management interface. The nice thing about this guy and why we call it self-managed is you can fully manage the switch just using dip switches on the back of the unit. So if you look at the screen printing on the top right, you'll see P4, 100 and gigabit, just using that dip switch, we can set the port speed on the fiber optic port. So third one from the top, we can enable spanning tree on all ports. So we can easily deploy a spanning tree ring of 20 devices within minutes without any advanced configuration. This is great for our integrators that are maybe low voltage group, uh, maybe don't have a network engineer on staff, your networking group, maybe a, a larger shop, then those guys are gonna know how to set up a root bridge, how to set up the appropriate links. With this product, you don't need to know any of that. Just enable spanning tree, set up your ring, and you're off and running. Another great feature is this has a built-in MUX DMUX feature. So the nice thing about this, it will optically or electrically isolate data on port one and output it on port one on the other end device. So if you have two of these connected, you have a intercom or camera system on port one, it's only gonna output on port one on the remote unit. Where this is applicable is if you have a larger campus deployment, let's say it's a university, they're gonna have their switching technology on port one, and let's say that's a, you know, let's call it a San Francisco switch. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to name names here, but let's call it that big guy from the Bay Area. And then on the other port, you're gonna have their voice network. Voice network's gonna take priority because it's handling 911 emergency services calls. So using this device, we can extend VLANs, we can extend layer three routing with, without any additional configuration. So think about that. You, I know you see this a lot. You go into a larger deployment, maybe it's a, a Fortune 500 company, they're gonna have their switching group and they're not gonna want you to plug anything into the network. Just because anything you introduce to the network, they gotta manage. With this device, you just tell them, give us support, we're unmanaged, no IP interface if you don't wanna use it, and it's self-configurable. So we extend their VLANs, we extend their routing with just a simple dip switch. That's really nice and we segregate traffic. So this comes in a two ethernet and four ethernet port option. And then we also support 30 watts per port or 60 watts per port. So really nice device. It has Port Guardian. Um, I'll have additional info on our website on Port Guardian. It's the best edge security out there. Uh, great product, feature rich, easy to deploy. So anyone can deploy this within minutes, simple to install, just great product overall. And of course, it meets full hardened ComNet specs. And then the last product I'll introduce here before I open it up to some questions here is our eight port made in the USA switch. Um, I'm fortunate enough to work on the software on the switch, did a lot of testing. I wrote the MIB files for the SNMP uh, manager on this, did a lot of great work. This has been years in the making. So fully hardened, uh, no fans, no moving components in there. Um, made in the USA, the lead software engineer is a guy based out of Springfield, Mass with three golden retrievers and loves to fish. I mean, it's about as made in America as you can get uh, great product. From the software base, we put enterprise level features in this switch. So our competitors and the eight port industrial grade market, 
they're going to have a small fan. If that fan dies, you know, it's a cheap little component. All of a sudden, your internal components are going to fry out. We don't have any moving parts in this guy. Other thing is with our low cost competitors or our industrial grade competitors, they're basic edge devices. This is a full layer three light enterprise level feature set in an eight port switch. So from a spanning tree protocol, we support not only general spanning tree, we support rapid spanning tree, multiple spanning tree and ERPS. From VLAN standpoint, we support port-based VLANs, tag VLANs, voice VLANs, and MAC filtering VLANs, or MAC-based VLANs. So it's really everything you can see that's uh, industry norm, IEEE standards, it's pretty much should be in this switch. So meets the hard ITS specs for vibration and shock resistance in we have a few variations of this guy. So the first option is an all gigabit option. The three fiber ports support 100 meg, gigabit, and 2.5 gig optics. The uh, RJ45 ports are all gig. We also have a 100 meg version of this. So the, the fiber ports still support gig and 2.5 gigs but the RJ45 uh, ethernet ports or copper ports only support 10 100 meg. So that's for your standard camera applications. You know, your camera's not gonna request typically more than 100 meg. So you'll deploy that and then your uplink will still support the gigabit connection or 2.5 gig if you're using all eight ports. So keep that in mind. And then if they're available in non-POE form, 30 watts available on eight ports, or we have a 60 watt version. On the 60 watt version of the switch, he always available at ports one through four, 60 watts. Ports five through eight have 30 watt support. Uh, redundant power supplies, dual power inputs, and uh, a contact alarm as well. So fully managed, um, feature rich, enterprise level technology, great product. This is our flagship product. We've done a lot with the retrofit. We made our name in the copper line products. Um, we're made or we're well known for anything transmission space. This is leading us into the, the next wave or the next, um, the next generation of ComNet products. So we're really proud of this. We also have a 24 port version available. That switch has 12 PoE ports and 12 fiber uplink ports. Same exact feature set. Layer three light will support essentially uh, static routes. We do not support RIP and OSPF at the edge, but we do support static routes and um, up to, I believe, 2000 VLANs on the switch. So anything, any network technology you need at the edge, it should have it. Uh, there's nothing, nothing missing from this guy. So just to recoup here or cover everything we talked about, uh, most of our products are hardened. Um, you know, we're increasing standard industry norms. We really want to take the lead on what we consider hardened. So, you know, we're, we're designed for extreme harshest environments. We're designed for to deal with shock, vibration, EMI interference. Uh, we're really ruggedized and the industry leader, I feel, in that technology. So going forward, um, you guys have been great with us. You guys have been um, leading with us for a long time. So we always appreciate your support and we look forward to working with you going forward. So just to reiterate what I started with, I'm our national trainer. Uh, if you want to contact me, feel free. Uh, maybe you have some ideas on a lunch and learn for some customers. You want to reach out to some new dealers. I'd be happy to get something set up where, um, you know, maybe we get some new dealers on board IP technology. So keep in mind, I was in the engineering group. At one point, um, I considered myself previous job was a network engineer. So I can get as technical as need be. So um, definitely not... Uh, Sales oriented for all that stuff. I'll, I'll list uh, my counterparts here, Kevin McKeever, who's the Eastern Region Strategic Account Manager. 
and also Jeff Folk covers the West. I believe those guys uh, limit to a, roughly Chicago is uh, our West. Anything east of that will be Kevin's territory. And then from a full support standpoint, uh, you guys probably know Brian, John, and the team in the uh, Danbury office, Danbury, Connecticut office. They're also available tech support at comnet.net. I see those emails, so feel free to do those after hours or anytime or email me directly. And then there's our main support line. So I'm gonna open it up a little bit here. Uh, we have a few minutes. So thank you guys for joining us on this. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. I think Bill, you had a question. Did you wanna uh, chime in? You guys can't speak to you. They can only type things on the on the uh, Q and A box or the chat box. Okay, so I'm seeing uh, some questions here. So from Joe, uh, what about explosion proof where necessary? So that's going to be based on your enclosure. So the nice thing about that is with explosion proof, we can mount this hardware up to 300 feet away or more. So. Explosion proof is gonna be, if you're doing testing with the camera, the camera is gonna to need to be explosion proof uh, and then just run the existing cabling through. If you need this in an environment where you might see some uh, harsh chemicals or that explosion, that's all a, a controller base or enclosure base. And then Joe, rep firms. Yes, we do have rep firms. Um, I can get you a list once I get your contact info. Uh, we have uh, 12 different rep firms in North America. Um, they're all happy to help uh, with you on that. And then Jeremiah has a question on wireless. What frequency is your wireless? Uh, natively out of the box, we support Uni 1 and Uni 3 bands. So Uni 1 is 5.1, 5.2 gigahertz. Uni 3 is 5758. We don't support 2.4 gig right now. It's a little bit noisy. A lot of your home Wi-Fi routers are on the 2.4 gig range. So we try to avoid it. We do have the license base 4.9 available if uh, you have an application that needs it. It's a free upgrade. We don't list it. That would be up to the integrator to enable that. So if we feel the integrator has the abilities to do that. We feel they did their due diligence to get certification. We will provide the free software upgrade to support the 4.9 uh, license band. And that's for emergency services. So that's why we don't list it on our website. 